Hi there, it's April Jensen here. I just wanted to show you what we have next for this fun Halloween time. And what I've been working on is my dress for this witch doll. Now, since I gave her brown shoes before, um, I didn't want the dress to be completely black because I just thought that'd be kind of weird to then suddenly have some brown shoes. So I decided to add in some green and then have some black on top of it. I haven't decided exactly if I'm going to have some green on the sleeves yet or just do all this black up here or what. But anyway, she's starting to come along, so I'm excited about that. And for her shoes, I'm going to be using some of this. It's kind of like a twine, except it's more probably cotton-based or something. I'm not sure exactly. You just find them in the craft store. There's usually several colors in a packet. But anyway, it's nice and fine. And so then what I'll do is go through and put some probably Aline's fast grab glue into each of these holes and then just push the the twine into it so then I can make some laces for up the shoes too because that'll give it a nice finished look. So there's that and then I also want to make her a broom. I have to see. I might have to do two sticks together probably for it to be long enough for her. That's probably what I'll end up doing. So I'm going to show you how I make the broomstick. Okay, so to make this broomstick, and it's going to be a little bit on the long side, I have my two sticks. But that's actually going to work out pretty good because that way I can make it bend a little bit. And I was kind of wanting that to happen as well. So what I'm going to do first is just wire these together. And then I'll work on the bend in just a little bit. I'll just do an initial wiring like this. Twist it tight. You'll want to use some tools so you can get it really, really tight. Um attachment going on here. And then if you want, you can take the wire up up your um, stick a bit more too, so it kind of just leaves some texture going on. Okay. So kind of like that. That's going to probably be enough of a bend for me because I just want a little bit and I'm going to exaggerate it with the clay as well. So then the next thing, what we want to do let me get a nice surface for this. All right, so what I want to do actually is I have my clay here and it is just some scrap clay because we don't really need any special coloring because we'll end up painting this later. So we're not going to worry about that part. And then what I want to do next actually is use a little bit of this smoothing oil. It looks like mine doesn't have the lid cut off yet. So I'm just going to add just a little bit to my clay right like that. Several drops. Because I want it to be a bit more smooth. Um, let's see. It's going to go super smooth it looks like. All right, so what I want to do first is just take this. It's almost like silly putty. That's kind of more what it feels like at this state. And I just want to kind of cover this up so we can get this secured. You'll find it'll be really easy to smooth it along here. Now if you want to just use one stick and just have it be straight, that's a simpler style of, of broom. That's also an option too. This one's going to be longer, heftier because she's a bigger doll. I thought it'd be kind of cool to give her some props. Now 
Now what I'm trying to go for is like some knobby wood because I want the stick to actually look like it's more like a natural, a natural piece of wood that's been turned into a broomstick. You really can do any kind of design you want. I found that if you just type in which broomstick images on Google, you'll get a lot of ideas for the different shape and such. And so this video will just kind of give you the construction that you can then apply any of those shapes to. I think I want mine to especially be bigger at the top here. All right, this clay needs to be smoothed down a little bit more. You can see it really doesn't take much clay either to do this. And now for the bottom, that's probably about as low as I'm going to want to go because I want to leave plenty of room for the the string that we're going to use at the end there. All right, so the top, I want it to be a little bit more bulbous. I kind of want to make a branch end that's going to have like rings and stuff in it too. So I want to give that a little bit more space. Just kind of squeezing it up there to lengthen it out a little bit more. Almost like that. I'm going to put a little piece right on top because it keeps breaking open there. You know, one of the funnest Halloween things I went to was they had some, it's called a place called Evermore here, and it was a big carnival they did a few years back. And it was at night, and they had, you know, corn stalks all around and but people doing amazing things like uh like you know those ribbon acrobats that are on the silks they had those type of people there and um, people like on huge bicycles and huge stilts and just a lot of fun unique type of stuff it made it a really fun magical place to be for halloween all right so that looks pretty good on that end you can see how I just kind of want to vary the thickness here, though for most of it, I think I'm just going to go for thicker. We'll just have it taper thinner at the bottom there. But I kind of want to explain this big bulbous part in the center more, so I think the whole thing just being thicker is going to be best for that. Blend this in more. Now, by adding that smoothing oil, and honestly, you could use a little bit of baby oil if you wanted, like if you didn't have the smoothing oil around. It's just it will kind of eat away at the clay more than the smoothing oil will. The smoothing oil is actually the same oil that's used that's already in the clay. And that's why when you add it to it, if you need your clay to soften up, it does, because it's just like adding the main ingredient. As if, like, if clay were made were water-based, it'd be like adding more water to it to kind of thin it out more. So it's nice to have that smoothing oil around. It does come in handy here and there. Though when I do actual smoothing on my dolls, I typically will use the smoothing gel, which is that orange gel-like material. 
just because it seems to go a little bit slower in the process of smoothing the clay and turning it into kind of like a, I don't know, it can get sticky after a while if you add too much of it. Both of those actually. Okay, I'm trying to close that down again. I might end up just having to bake it and then add a little piece later because it's kind of annoying me. It reminds me of those finger wires. <laughs> if you ever make the art dolls, and you're working on the fingers. Speaking of which, I have a long overdue surprise coming. I have the Maleficent videos almost done. I'm working on the hands ones right now and I need to finish the shoes. And then I'll have them up for you. So I know that's been a long wait. That doll's been waiting a long time for me to have the time and space to give her the attention she needs. All right, you can see how this is starting to look like some cool knobby wood. Now if you don't want any of that metal coming through like that, you can just keep on adding some clay over it. That looks like a pretty good broomstick, huh? If you want to add any more designs or details, line work or anything, you can use your wrinkle detail tool or the Johnston 3-in-1 tool. I don't know that I'm going to do any of that ex other than just on the tip. I want to add in um, some rings. But I think I do want, there that looks kind of cool, just kind of squeeze it like this. I haven't made a broomstick before. Um, I've made wands though, back when Harry Potter had come out when my kids were young. It was so fun. <laughs> I think we had three of them all dye their hair black at the same time too. And then my one son, my f um, my fifth child, he's my second to youngest, he's like 16 now, but he was so cute. He actually had a scar on his head that he got when he was like two or so because we were out camping and he fell into a fire pit. Luckily it was an empty fire pit so it wasn't going but it, he hit his head on the edge of it really badly so he's always had the scar on the center of his head and so then when Harry Potter came out and made a big to-do about that cool scar he just that worked out really well. Okay so you can see how we just keep smoothing and just kind of squeeze it in certain areas just to make it look kind of knotty and gnarled. And then I think the last thing I want to do before I bake it is just show you how to do that, the end part. So I'm going to do it with my 3-in-1 tool. And what I want to do is just kind of trace some lines around like this. And I think I'll just go around the whole thing. And just make some tree rings just to make it look more realistic. And then I'll be sure to go in this with some acrylic paint later after it's been baked. There we go. Okay, so once you get your stick, your broomstick looking like this to this state, just give it what finishing touches you want and then bake it. I'm gonna stick mine in the oven at 275 since I'm using ProSculpt Palmer clay and bake it for, I'm gonna do mine probably about 15 or 20 minutes or so. It's all pretty thin clay. And then let it cool completely and then we'll show you how to paint it and add in the broom part. <laughs> 